Hello and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to calculate the maximum distributed load on a beam uh, to find out where the plastic hinge would uh, form and how to calculate the ultimate load that we can apply on a beam before it starts to be unstable. Let's assume we have a beam with the length of 2L, both ends are fixed, L and L, and half of this beam is under a distributed load. Now the idea is to calculate the maximum or ultimate load that we can apply to this beam until it starts to be unstable. First of all, we have to calculate what's the degree of indeterminacy of this beam. So typically, if we have uh, beams which are not under inclined forces, meaning that we do not have any horizontal force, or if we do not have any uh, thermal load, then in practice, the horizontal reactions are not counted for calculation of uh, the degree of indeterminacy. So what do we do? We write down how many support reactions do we have, ignoring the horizontal reactions. So here we have two support reactions in the support A, and we have two unknowns or two support reactions at point C. As a result, the summation of number of unknown here is four. And how many equations do we have as far as we ignore Fx in this calculation or in this beam? We have only two equations, sigma fy equals zero and sigma moment equals zero. As a result, uh, we have only two equations. So the beam is indeterminate with the degree of four minus two equals to two. As a result, the maximum number of hinges or plastic hinges, number of plastic hinges will be two plus one. The difference is that here, most likely two plastic hinges would uh, form at point A and point C. But the third one is not uh, clear where it would form. Uh, we can solve it analytically or we can assume that this point will be in the part of the beam which is under the load Q. But we don't know where because uh, the maximum bending moment occurs in this beam somewhere between AB and when the point A and point C becomes plastic, we have simple beam which half of it is under the load or extra load delta Q and the maximum moment would happen somewhere else. So the plastic hinge would, would form somewhere between these two. The easiest way is we assume the maximum or the plastic hinge would form somewhere between A and B, meaning that A and C are already known to be plastic hinges and somewhere here, for example, we assume the third one would happen. Similarly, like the previous widow, we can sketch the form of the beam immediately after becoming mechanism. So here it is, but the, this time we don't know what the length of this uh, X is. And the idea of, is finding that X. So here this will be L minus X and the other length is L. So we have the load only here and we just need to calculate what's the uh, external work. External work is summation of force times delta, which in this case will be integration of Q times deformation. As far as Q is constant, then the integration of delta will be the area of the uh, loaded part, meaning that you just need to calculate the area of this uh, hatched area and calculate that. So it will be Q times the area of the load where it is applied. So now let's uh, sketch it one more time and write down some parameters to make it easier for calculation. This is delta and let's say this is delta prime. This length is x, the other length is 2L minus x and the length from point B to point C is L. I assume that this is theta and the other side is theta prime. First of all, delta over x will be theta and delta over 2L minus x will be theta prime. From here, we can find out that theta times x will be the same as theta prime times 2L minus x. As a result, theta prime will be x divided by 2L minus x times theta. 
The other is delta divided by 2L minus X will be the same as delta prime divided by L based on the similar triangle principle. So delta prime will be delta times L divided by 2L minus X. Now we are going to calculate the area of this loaded or distributed loaded area and it will be the area will be delta times x divided by 2 plus delta plus delta prime divided by 2 times its length which is l minus x now i can substitute delta with uh, delta prime with the equation number one that we already have so one over two times delta times x plus delta plus delta times l divided by 2l minus x times l minus x so area will be delta divided by 2 times x plus 1 plus l divided by 2l minus x times l minus x let's simplify this x plus 2l minus x plus l divided by 2l minus x times l minus x x times 2l minus x plus 2L minus X or 3L minus X times L minus X divided by 2L minus X. 2L X minus X square plus 3L square minus 3L square minus L square plus X square divided by 2L minus X. So area will be delta divided by 2 times. Let's simplify this X2 by X2. We have 3L square minus 2LX divided by 2L minus X. Now we have area and we can calculate the external work. So external work will be Q times area, which will be Q delta divided by two times 3L square minus 2L X divided by 2L minus X. Coming back to our deformation, we have point A, we have point B left and right, and we have point C become uh, becoming classic hinges so internal work will be mp times theta or point a mp times theta plus theta prime for left and right point b and mp times theta prime for point c so it will be mp times 2 theta plus 2 theta prime coming back to our equation theta prime can be substituted by x divided by 2l minus x times theta finally internal work will be 2 mp times theta 1 plus x divided by 2l minus x we can combine these two together and the result will be 2l divided by 2l minus x now we have the external work and we have internal work to calculate the ultimate load we need to put these two equations to be equal external work equals to internal work and we know that uh, the relation between theta and delta theta is delta over x q times delta divided by 2 3 l square divided minus 2 l x divided by 2 l minus x will be 2 mp times delta over x 2 l divided by 2 l minus x and from here we can simplify this and we can calculate q based on the equation of uh, based on the parameter of x so it will be 4 mp times 2 l divided by x times 3 l square minus 2 l x or i can simplify it to mp 8 mp times l divided by 3 l square x minus 2 l x square if you remember in the previous video, we discussed about the first load that would result in collapse of the beam. So if you want to have the minimum value of Q resulting in having the unstable beam, then this Q should be minimum. To have minimum value of Q in the other side, the numerator is constant mp is a constant value and the length is also constant but denominator is a function of x so this should be maximum sometimes if you are solving the equation you might have x also in the numerator then you need to uh, take derivative for that but here this is a little bit easier so our function of x will be 3l squared times x minus 2l x squared and we want to maximize this function as a result Derivative of f by respect of x will be 3l squared minus 4lx and it should be 0 as a result. 
x will be 3 over 4 that meaning that it happens between a and b in the point of 0.75 percent of the length now we can substitute this value to equation of q to calculate the minimum value of so it will be a mp times l divided by here i can write down 3 over 4 l as x or i can write it down l times x 3 l minus 2x so here it will be l times 3 over 4 l times 3 l minus 2 times 3 over 4 l 8 mp times l divided by 3 over 4 l squared times or l power by 3 times 3 minus 3 over 2 8 mp times l divided by 3 over 4 l 3 times 3 minus 3 over 2 will be 3 over 2 so this will be 8 times 8 64 mp divided by 9 l squared so meaning that the collapse load or q ultimate will be 64 divided by 9 times mp divided by l squared now let's have a, a numerical example and in the next video i'm going to model the same beam with uh, rfm to find out how it can be done also in any application in this case i'm going to use rfm from the loop one so let's assume we are having a a steel cross section for example 50 millimeter by 120 millimeter and sigma y is 250 megapascal uh, this kind of cross section 5 centimeter by 12 centimeter might not be very realistic but this is just for the educational purposes m plastic is sigma y times b h squared divided by 4 which is w plastic for a rectangle cross section it will be 250 megapascal times 50 millimeter times 120 millimeter power by 2 divided by 4 and this value will be 250 times 50 times 120 power by 2 divided by 4 and then 45 kilonewton meter meaning that the ultimate load that we can apply to this beam will be 64 divided by 9 times 45 kilonewton meter times uh, divided by let's assume that length is five meters the total length of the beam will be 10 meters so it will be five meters power by two so then it will be 64 divided by nine times 45 divided by five power by two and this value will be 12.8 kilonewton per meter meaning that if we apply the load 12.8 8 kilonewton per meter this will be the ultimate load that we can apply to this beam that's the end of this uh, video we went through the theory of calculation ultimate load on a uh, fixed fixed beam which half of it is under distributed load of q in the next video i'm going to model the same beam with the rfm from the Lubal, and we will learn how to model a material which is elastic perfectly plastic and how to come to the same number and cross-check our calculation thank you for watching see you next time bye